Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. In this one, we're going to cover Top Lane Nautilus, the Titan of the Depths. Beware the Depths. Now, for a lot of you support Nautilus players, this guide will still apply to you and I will be talking about your item build as well in the item build page, so don't worry. But now, let's hop into our pros and cons. Nautilus is a very solid frontline tank that brings an extremely high amount of CC into teamfights. He's got a point and click ultimate which is really strong and allows newer players to be relatively successful with him as well. He then also gets multiple shields. Now he of course takes Courage of the Colossus Mastery which can be procced relatively easy but he does also have a shield from his W ability as well. Finally Nautilus works in the top lane, jungle and support so he can be played in multiple roles and this will allow you to not be counterpicked a lot of the time if you do pick him for top. Early on in the draft phase they won't necessarily think you're a top lane Nautilus. Nautilus however has a very long cooldown on his Q and W ability so you have to be relatively careful whenever you do use them. He is a relatively easy champion to pick up but he is still hard to master. Your ultimate can be way more devastating when you use it to hit multiple people and your Q ability must be landed. For your masteries, as I've already mentioned, you want to go 18 resolve and 12 ferocity, grabbing that Courage of the Colossus mastery keystone. It's extremely easy to proc on Nautilus, because even a basic attack due to your passive ability will root the target and proc Courage of the Colossus. This will work incredibly well with Nautilus since you have a shield on your W as well and you're going to be so hard to bring down. In trades, people usually won't even make it through your shields, let alone your health pool. On your rune page, you'll want to grab attack speed reds, armor yellows, scaling magic resist blues, and ability power quints. If you're against a strong AP champion, then you may want to consider getting flat magic resist instead, so you have an easier early lane phase. Of course, in an easy matchup, you could always take either scaling or flat cooldown reduction as well. Of course, you could also go for magic penetration reds as well, but I really like the attack speed, and it does work really nicely with your W ability. For your summoner spells, you're going to want to pick up flash and teleport. Nautilus isn't the most mobile champion out there, and Flash does have the ability to save you over and over again. You can also use it offensively with your dredge line to engage from a very long distance on an enemy champion. Teleport is then by far your best pick in that top lane for Nautilus. You have pretty damn good ganks and roams, and if you can flank the enemy team, you can set up some really easy kills for you, or of course them. It's also really good for split pushing since you will be able to make it to teamfights and objectives from that top lane. Now you could also take Ignite for Kill Pressure or Exhaust if you are in a very hard matchup, but usually I just advise to go for Flash and Teleport. Nautilus's passive is Staggering Blow and it allows you to deal some extra damage and also root your target. This passive lets your basic attacks deal an extra between 8 and 110 bonus physical damage and root your target between 0.5 and 1.5 seconds. This effect cannot occur on the same target more than once every few seconds and that has an on-target cooldown of between 9 and 6. It's a great way to add some extra damage onto your harassment and also root them proccing your Courage of the Colossus. Of course then this extra added damage will also make last hitting a lot easier. Nautilus's Q is called Dredge Line and it's a very solid engage tool that can also be used in a situation where you need to escape. This is your ability that hurls your anchor forward dragging you towards them and pulling them a bit towards you as well. This will deal a pretty respectable amount of magic damage and briefly stun them as well. You can also use this as an escape tool to anchor to terrain and pull you towards it, making a gap between you and the enemy champion. It's very important to land on the enemy champion because it's your only way of actually closing a gap unless you ultimate them and just walk up. Your W ability is Titan's Wrath and it's your reliable shield that also adds some damage. When you activate this ability you will shield yourself for 10 seconds and cause your basic attacks to deal bonus magic damage over 2 seconds to your target and all enemies around them while the shield holds. It does also reset your auto attack timer, so usually you'll want to follow it right after another auto attack. This ability is very strong in trades since it will block damage and provide extra damage, but it does have an 18 second cooldown, so be careful whenever you use it. It works great with those attack speed reds we took on a rune page so we can get off more attacks and do more damage. Your E ability is Riptide and it adds some nice AoE damage and is great for farming. When you activate this ability you will create 3 waves of explosions and deal magic damage to all enemies hit and slow them as well. Enemies can also be hit by multiple waves and each wave beyond the first only deals half damage. This ability is really great when you're farming because you can use your passive to get minions low and clean up an entire wave with your E ability. If the enemy top laner is a melee champion then usually they'll be in range as well and take damage from this as you clear minions. Your ultimate is depth charge and it's a very solid engage and can knock up multiple targets. 
When activated, you'll send out a charge to the target enemy, dealing magic damage and knocking them up for one second, and also stunning them on arrival. All enemies this travels through are also knocked up for one second, and of course stunned. So this is that point and click ability that you'll usually want to use on the enemy AD carry, or of course the enemy AP carry. If however you're in a situation where there is a choke point, then usually you'll want to use this on the enemy backliners, so it will go through the entire team and knock all of them up. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then you'll want to follow up with your E ability because it's really good for poking and of course farming minion waves. For its great defensive utility and of course trading, you'll then want to max your W ability and then save your Q for last, just make sure you get one early point so you can CC the enemy and close a gap. For your all-in combo, you'll first want to start by using your ultimate on the enemy to pop them up. As soon as it lands, use your Q ability dredge line to chain CC. You'll instantly want to follow up with one auto attack to use your passive CC as well. At this point I like to use my E ability Riptide, hit them with auto attack and reset it with your W and auto attack again. Here's what that full combo will look like in full speed. In the lane phase your main goal is to grab as much CS as you can while also harassing the enemy top laner in between minion kills. You can also use your Riptide to last hit minions and harass the enemy champion at the same time, so make sure you're using it. You'll then want to try to hit the enemy with your passive staggering blow to deal extra damage and root the enemy. This can be a great way to hold them in place so they take the full damage from your Riptide and then you can also follow up with an easy dredge line. Generally though, I like to save my dredge line to either escape ganks or have it available when the jungler comes in for a gank. Nautilus is a pretty solid team fighter, but using your depth charge properly is very important. Generally, you're going to want to use it on the enemy champion who outputs the most damage. Now it does have the potential to be even stronger though if you can get it on somebody farther away so the charge hits multiple people. Next, you'll want to try to land your dredge line on a really squishy target to hold them in place for one of your carries to delete. I like to combo it with depth charge so it will be very easy to land and crowd control the target for even longer. Then of course use your titan's wrath to block damage and your E to slow multiple targets. Now I'm going to cover a couple hard matchups, and first up is Alawi. The main reason here is because you're not really going to want to use your kit to engage into her, because if you do, she's going to land her Test of the Spirit, and then ultimate, and completely destroy you. This will already deal a ton of damage, but when you add Harsh Lessons, which does percentage of targets maximum health, she does even more. Against Alawi, you're probably going to want to farm as much as possible, at least until you have a ton of armor, and don't engage into her. Next here is Darius, and he's a hard matchup, because he's Darius. Now you do have the potential to win this matchup, but you can't let him get his full stacks of hemorrhage on you, and you have to try to avoid his decimate as much as you can. Now of course you are a very tanky champion, and it will take him some time to kill you, but when he does get you low, he can easily finish you off with his amazing ultimate, Noxian Guillotine. He also gets passive armor penetration from his apprehend, so you do have to stack a lot of armor. Next here we have Aurelia, and the main reasons here are the nice mobility she gets from her Q, Blade Surge, and the true damage of course from her W, High 10 style. A really good Aurelia is going to use her Q to dodge your Q, and then engage onto you with her W, and of course stun you with her E ability. If you do manage to get off some good stuns, well then her passive kind of helps her out as well, since there is reduced cooldown reduction. Try to abuse her as much as you can, but when she is level 6 and has a Trinity Force as well, you are going to have a very rough time. The last one we have here is Riven, and this is more of a skill matchup, but she has the potential to easily beat you. She can use her E and Q ability to dodge yours, and then engage onto you with the rest of her Q charges. At this point, she's probably going to ultimate and stun you, and then go for an all-in. I'd suggest using your Q more defensively, and only use it to stun her when she tries to engage on you. This can be extremely winnable, but also very hard. Now we're going to look at that item build, which starts with either a Corrupting Potion and a Warding Totem, or a Doran Shield, Health Potion, and a Warding Totem. For your core build, you want to get a Sunfire Cape, Iceborne Gauntlet, and a Spirit Visage. If you're against a very high AD matchup, and you want to reduce attack speed, then instead of that Iceborne Gauntlet, you could just get a Frozen Heart early on instead. For your boot options, you first have Merc Treads against high AP and CC, Ninja Tabbies against high AD teams, and Boots of Swiftness if you want all-around mobility. For our item pool, the first item listed is the ZZ Drop Portal, which is great because you get some armor, magic resist, and of course you can spawn those annoying little minions. It's a great way to add some split push. For your armor options, you can go for either a Randuin's, Deadman's Plate, or a Thornmail. 
Randuin's is great against high crit champions like Yasuo. Deadman's Plate is great if you do want extra mobility. And Thornmail is amazing against very high AD teams, so you can reflect some damage. For your magic resist options, we have the Locket, Banshee's Veil, and Abyssal Scepter. Locket is a great shield if you want to add some team utility and your support champion didn't get one so you can shield your entire team. Banshee's Veil is great for blocking crowd control so you can have an easier time engaging, and if you do want to add some extra damage, Abyssal Scepter is great as well. For our normal full build though, we take our core, get the Merc Treads, and then a ZZ Rot Portal, and a Randuin's. You'll be an extremely tanky champion, do some pretty good damage with that Iceborne Gauntlet, and have some annoying split push. If you instead wanted to be a support Nautilus, then things of course would be a lot different. You'd first get your face of the mountain and a ruby sightstone and boot some ability because you would want to roam around and try to help your team by landing cues. At this point, you'll pretty much always want to pick up a locket because it's very, very strong in team fights, and then get a redemption so you can help heal and do some nice damage. Now there's an absolute ton of items you can get for your last slot, but usually I'll go for a knight's vow because it really does help your teammates. But that covers everything I've got for top lane Nautilus. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all of my social medias if you guys would like to find more of my content. I also have a link to my Discord down there, so if you would like to hop in and just chat or ask anything League of Legends related, please feel free to stop by. There is also a giveaway going on right now on my Twitter, so that's one you'll probably want to check out as well. But anyways, thank you guys a ton for watching, I do really appreciate it, and I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!